The way is the Hebrew word derech, which is literally a trail or path. In a figurative sense, it is the manner that things are done. The Hebrew word behind the word Lord, when it is written in all uppercase letters, is four Hebrew letters, Yod, He, Vav, and He, and is most often pronounced as Yahweh. Because all Hebrew names are Hebrew words with meaning, the focus on Yahweh should not be its pronunciation but its meaning, as a Hebrew name reflects the character of the individual. This name includes the verb Hava, meaning to exist, and the letter Yod as a prefix which means He. He exists. In the ancient Hebrew mind, only that which can be seen or experienced actually exists. Everything else doesn't exist. This is in contrast to the Greek mind, which theorizes and attempts to find and explain that which cannot be experienced. When Yahweh was sending Moses back to Egypt, Moses said, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? From the Israelites' perspective, Yahweh did not exist as they had never seen or experienced him. So Yahweh told Moses, Ehia asher Ehia, which can be translated as, I am the one who exists, because I am the existing one. The Hebrew verb asa is used very frequently in the Hebrew text, about 3,000 times. The parent root of this verb is the letters ayin and sin. The ayin is a picture of an eye and can mean experience, as you experience the world around you with your eyes. The sin is a picture of a thorn. When these two letters are combined, they mean experience the thorn. The first time man experienced the thorn is in Genesis 3, which states that because of Adam's sin, the land will produce thorns and he must now work to bring forth its produce. The verb asa literally means to do something. In the context of doing a trail, it means to walk in the trail or follow the trail. While the Hebrew word tzedakah is translated as justice in the King James Version here, the King James Version usually translates this word as righteousness, such as we have previously seen in Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. The words justice and righteousness are abstract terms, but since all Hebrew words are rooted in something concrete, we must understand the more concrete meaning of the Hebrew word behind these translations. The first letter in the Hebrew word tzedakah is the tzade again, the picture of a trail. The Hebraic definition of this word is to be on the correct trail. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6.25 again with this definition of tzedakah. And the correct trail will be for us if we are careful to follow all these directions in front of Yahweh our God just as he directed us. A word that is often paralleled with tzedakah is the Hebrew word rasha, usually translated as wickedness. While tzedakah is being on the correct trail, rasha is literally leaving or being lost from the trail. Proverbs 11.5 The mature one, walking in the correct trail, will make his path straight, but the lost one, leaving the trail, will fall. If you are walking through the wilderness and realize you have lost the trail, what do you do? You turn around and get back on the trail. The Hebrew word shuv means just that, to turn around and is often used in the context of repentance. When you realize you have done something wrong, you repent. You figuratively turn around and get back on the trail. 
The last word in Genesis 18:19 is judgment and is the Hebrew word mishpat. When you come to a fork in the trail, you must decide which fork to take. And the word mishpat means to make a decision, to choose the correct fork in the trail. How do you know which fork in the trail to take? By following the directions that you have been given. Remember the letter tzare? In that pictograph is a juncture of two trails. In every trail, whether literal or figurative, decisions must be made. We began by looking at the King James Version of Genesis 18, verse 19. For I know him, that he will command his children in his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment. Now that we have examined each of the words in Genesis 18:19 from its original Hebraic perspectives, let us translate this verse more concretely. For I intimately know him, that he will provide the directions to the trail to his children and his household after him, and they will maintain the trail of Yahweh by following the correct path and choosing the correct fork in the trail. Our Western mind often views the way of Yahweh in abstract terms by placing the emphasis on doctrine and theology, in other words, how you think. But the way of Yahweh is not about what you think, but what you do. He has provided us with the directions for His trail, and it is our responsibility to follow those directions and teach them to our children. All that we have discussed thus far is the Hebrew concept of Torah, a Hebrew word that we will be examining in detail next.